Hi there. Now, if you remember, we were given that f of x equal 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus ax plus 18, where a was a constant. And we were given that x minus 3 was a factor of f of x, and we had to show that a equaled minus 9. And with that, we were asked to factorise f of x completely, and it gave us this expression here. f of x was x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now for this part, we're given that g of y equals 2 multiplied by 3 to the power 3y, then minus 5 multiplied by 3 to the power 2y, and then minus 9 times 3 to the y, and then plus 18. And what we've got to do now is find the values of y that satisfy g of y equaling 0, giving you answers to two decimal places where appropriate for four marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, as usual, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay then, welcome back if you had a go. Now for this, we've got to really try and see if there's a relationship between g of y and f of x, okay? And there is when you look carefully. What we've got is that we'll just copy this g of y down and just modify it, okay, a little. For this first term, we've got 2 multiplied by 3 to the power 3y. But what I can do is rewrite this as 2 multiplied by 3 to the power y, all cubed. It's exactly the same thing. Because when you've got something like this, you just multiply the powers, and that will give you 3 to the power 3y. And we can do much the same with the second term here. We can rewrite this as minus 5 multiplied by 3 to the power y, and this is all squared. We don't have to do anything to that term there. It's just going to be minus 9 multiplied by 3 to the power y, and then plus 18. So this takes on a similar form now to f of x. You can see I've got the same basic pattern structure where the x is just being replaced with 3 to the power y. So I could factorize this knowing this result here. So when we have g of y equaling 0, okay, g of y equaling 0, this will be exactly the same as putting f of x equal to 0, where x is going to be equal to 3 to the power y. Let's just put it in here, where x equals 3 to the power y. So if that's the case, we already know that if f of x was equal to 0, then each of these factors would equal 0. So let's just put that down. So we would therefore have x minus 3 would equal 0, or the other factor, 2x minus 3, that would equal 0, or x plus 2 would equal 0. And so this is going to lead on to x equaling 3, if we add 3 to both sides there, or in this one here, if we add 3, 2x would equal 3. Divide by 2 to both sides, x would equal 1.5, or 3 over 2. Or, for this one, if we subtract 2 from both sides, x would equal minus 2. So let's just deal with, say, when x equals 3, first of all. So we'll just say when x equals 3. When x equals 3, then... 3 to the power y must equal 3. Okay, so therefore we've got 3 to the power y equals 3. And this is easy to guess. You can see it's going to have to be 1. So it follows from this that y must be equal to 1. Okay, so that's one value for y. Now I'm going to take this value of x next, when x equals minus 2. Okay, when x equals minus 2, this is an obvious result. 
it would give us 3 to the power y would have to equal minus 2. But when you've got an exponential function like this, you can't have negative values. There's no value of y which would return minus 2 when you do 3 to that power. So for this one, there's going to be no solution. Okay, no solution then. So we'll take the last one. Okay, this is going to be a lot longer to work out. And that is when x equals 3 upon 2. So we'll just start up here. When x equals 3 upon 2, 1 and a half. Okay, so it's going to follow from this that 3 to the power y must equal 3 over 2. And to solve this, well, there's two ways that I could think of doing this. Okay, I could, I've got to take logs when I've got an equation where I've got a power here. And I could take logs to base 3 as one version, or I could take logs to base 10. So let's take logs to base 3 first of all, if you happen to take that route. Therefore, what we would have is y would equal the log in base 3 of 3 over 2. And if you've got a calculator that can work in base 3, then you should be able to see when you've typed this in that you end up with this equaling 0 0.3690 and so on. Okay, so check that one out. Alternatively, you could do it with logs in base 10. If I log both sides of this in base 10, I'd have, we'll put or here as an alternative way, or you would have the log of 3 to the power y equals the log of 1 and a half, or 3 over 2. Now you could use the power rule for logs, and that is you can bring the y down out the front of the log. So therefore, we'd have y multiplied by the log of 3 equals the log of 1 and a half, 3 over 2. And then if I rearrange this, I can divide both sides by log 3 and I get y equaling the log of 3 over 2, all divided by the log of 3. And again, if you work this one out, you will find that you get 0.36 nine zero and so on. So whatever method you decide to pick, whether it's the top one or the bottom one here, if you round y to two decimal places, then y will equal 0 0.37 to two decimal places, 2dp for short. Okay.